We're back with our Reporters Roundtable. This is a segment of the program where we ask our reporters, uh, students uh, from Lehman College who are writing for the Bronx Journal newspaper to come in and tell us a little bit about the stories they're working on. Uh, uh, thank you for being here uh, with me. To my uh, right is uh, Cristina Bosques. To my left is Charlene Garcia. And also with us is Aida Diaz. Thank you for being on the program. One of the things that we did on the, on the, in the Bronx Journal recently is we asked all of the students to work together on, on one story and to go out and research uh, this one particular study that had been done here in, in New York based on the census, census figures that came out on the Latino population in the Bronx. And uh, further studies were done here locally, and what they found is that the Latinos are already a majority of the population in the Bronx, and they also found that that majority is growing very, very slowly. So we're uh, as, bef as the, uh, differ differentiate from the rest of the nation where the Latino minority is growing very fast. Here, the, mi the Latino majority is growing very slow. But you guys went out into the community and you got reaction from people, uh, Latinos and non-Latinos, and you found out how they felt about you know, the fact that Latinos are now a majority, and you got very mixed uh, reviews. Some of them kind of uh, offended, people who were offended by the fact that Latinos are now a majority, and they had very strong remarks to make. So, Aida, tell us, uh, let's start with you. Tell us about some of the people that you encountered. And some of the people that I encountered, it was really funny because they were like questioning. Do we really care that we are the majority in the brands? Do we really going to make a difference? Uh, uh, the impact because um, they were questioning some of the people they don't vote even though they can't or some of the people um, they bubble maybe not for the right people politicians um, and also there was a, the other part where they say uh, what type of Latinos are coming to the Bronx uh, their income level their education level that's going to going to improve the butter and the in this part or it's going to become more violence and crimes and stuff like but that. But did you find that the people that you that you were talking to, especially the Latinos, uh, were very aware that the population numbers doesn't necessarily mean the voter numbers, the, the number of people who not go really, out to vote? Not really. They were not aware They're of that? Not aware. They because, were not you know, there are a lot of undocumented them. immigrants who don't vote. There's a lot of Latinos who are um, legal residents but have not registered or become That's citizens. Okay or have not bothered to register to vote. So the, you know, the population number doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lot of people going out to vote in the Latino community. Did you find some of those, some of the, that situation? Well, actually with the people that I spoke to, yeah. they took that information more on a personal level and they discussed it um, on the matter of how it affected their daily lifestyle and um, the things that went on in their homes mm -hmm. and how the food that they cook and the cleaning supplies that they use is so accessible because there are so many other Latinos in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So you mean they look for Latino products and they're able to find them in the local bodega? Yes. Mm -hmm. And people who are non-Latinos actually found themselves changing the way that they shopped because um, one woman used an example as Mistolin rather than uh, Mr. Clean because it's more available and at a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. So she's... Is this the woman who came from Ohio? Yes. Okay, you had a woman in the story, uh, we quote her in the story, who uh, is an American, white American, uh, who mm -hmm. moved uh, to the Bronx from Ohio and couldn't quite get used to the loud music in her mm -hmm. neighbors and the Hispanic neighbors and all that. Tell me about right. that. Uh, well, she's a Fordham University student mm -hmm. and she was actually um, very apprehensive after she moved in and um, she had stated that she's a lot more comfortable in her apartment because it's uh, more affordable and larger than a dormitory. but. Um, she found herself having to come back in between classes to take naps because at night she couldn't sleep with the loud music. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, a Latino customer that was by her... You were at a bodega? Yes, yes, to her. I was a, at a bodega. Okay, and another yes, customer right. overheard the conversation mm -hmm. and she had something to say. Yes, okay. and she said, she agreed with her completely and she said that she couldn't imagine her life without this music at night. This is a Latina now? Yes, this okay. is a Latina. And she said that, you know, her neighbors are also cheerful that she goes to sleep every night dancing in her bed to all these different types of Latino music and um, she can't imagine her life any different. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so she understood what the American woman was telling her about yes. how the loud music couldn't, but yes. now she, the, the, this, this woman from Ohio did uh, tell you that she She's pretty much adjusted to it now. Yeah, she's more adjusted to it now. She can kind of block out the music at night. And um, she's changed her lifestyle so that she can be more accustomed to mm -hmm. the daily living. Cristina, some of the people you encountered, tell us. 
Well, um, one of the person I spoke to didn't want his name to be put into it. Um, he gave me a lot of great information, but um, he was just letting me know that basically it was a lack of family planning. That's basically what it came down to. Um, didn't you talk to a guy, I don't think he even got in the story, didn't you talk to a guy who says, okay, you know, that means a lot more Latinos, a lot more Section 8? Exactly. How um, Yeah, he was upset. I, I showed him the, uh, the statistics and he was just amazed that mm -hmm. it could come out that way. Mm -hmm. Another student, Tokara Heath, who's not mm -hmm. here, uh, encountered some people who had racist attitudes mm -hmm. uh, about Latinos. Uh, tell us about some yeah. of those things. Um, Actually, she encountered uh, two gentlemen that were very apprehensive about it, and they were even uncomfortable with the idea that Latinos consider themselves Americans. Mm -hmm. And they even stated that if they felt Amer they needed, they wanted the right to vote, that they should have stayed in their own country in order to vote, mm -hmm. and um, also that they were only here to reproduce, that they would come to this country just so they can have more and more children and get more assistance from the government, mm -hmm. rather than making an actual impact in our society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when I well, the answer that he received from that gentleman was that, look, we are here because we want to make our dreams come true, mm -hmm. you know, and we are American as well as you are. We come here to work and we do the part, we pay taxes and all this stuff, and that's what his answer. But what's amazing was that it was a reaction. Uh, it the, was a reaction. The guy who said, a Latino who said, I'm here to make my dreams come true mm -hmm. and to follow mm -hmm. the American dream. The other guy reacted to him and said, what do you mean you're an American, okay. right? That's right. the way mm -hmm. it came down. You can't even pronounce the word. 